I'm Leon Todd for G66. Welcome to another Tuesday Tone Tip. This video actually marks the one year anniversary of this entire Tuesday Tone Tip series. So to say thank you, I want to give you all a little gift. I want to share my personal blocks library for the Axe FX3. These will work on the FM3 and the FM9 as well if you want to download them and try them. So there's a link in the video description where you can download these blocks. Once you've done that, what I want you to do is open up Axe Edit, go to Settings, Preferences, and navigate to the Workspace tab. So I think it defaults to General. You want to come down to Workspace, and where it says Library and Browse, hit Browse, and then select the folder that you've just downloaded. You can see for me, I've got it nested within a folder called Fractal Audio, Axe Edit 3, and I've called it LT fractal blocks. Alternatively, if you've got your own blocks or library, they will be organized into categories like amp, cab, drive, reverb. Just open up the relevant folder in the blocks that I've shared and copy and paste them to your personal blocks library. Once you've done that, uh, you can kind of right click anywhere on the grid, go library and hit refresh library. And you know, have all of my blocks in there. So let's play around with these and I'll show you how I would actually use these to build up some presets. I'm using the band commander amp model with one of my own IRs at the moment. This is what it sounds like clean on my PRS. <laughs> Now, the first thing I would do with a clean sound is add a compressor. So let's right click and we'll select compressor. There's a few little options in here. I've got a very 80s inspired style squishy compressor, one based around the JFET, one kind of mimicking the 1176 Cali 76 style settings. Uh, let's go with this JFET because I love this particular compressor. Just drop it in before the amp and it gives you this. <laughs> Okay, that is quite a subtle compressor, but I just like it to basically enhance my clean sound. The next thing I would do is add a reverb and there's plenty of reverb choices in here. If you just want a kind of a very subtle room style emulation, uh, there's a bunch of reverbs up here. I've just titled early reflections. Let's select this one. Basically, I just turned the late level on all of these down. So this is just a medium room. This one's great if you're using headphones and you just want a little bit of ambience. <laughs> Alternatively, if you want more of a traditional style reverb, I've got one in here called Room, which is using Recording Studio C. Not a lot of mix, not a lot of time, but this just kind of takes the edge off that directness. <laughs> That one is a lot more subtle. You might want to bring the time up on this and maybe the mix. You know, if you bring it up to about 35%, it's going to sound really, really roomy. You will notice on a bunch of these reverbs, uh, although not this particular one, that there are some low cuts in there. I'll show you one with those in a second, but this is what this one sounds like. Just tweaked a little bit. <laughs> Nice subtle room right there, but I think my go-to is this plate number one. And you can see in here, there is a low cut at 200 Hertz, just to kind of clean up the low end. I'm gonna roll with that one in slot A, or I should say channel A. Let's navigate to channel B and let's select a lovely big reverb. I'm gonna go with this PCM81 concert hall. I match these settings off my old lexicon PCM81. <laughs> That one is really, really nice and lush, but it kind of never gets in the way 
of your main tone. What I'm going to do is on channel B here, I am going to select the Mark IV settings from my blocks library. Let's try this. I'm going to bypass the compressor, but we'll try it with this big reverb just so you can see how nicely this concert hall reverb blends with the distorted sound. <laughs> Pretty epic reverb right there. We should add some delay to this. There are a lot of delay options in here. If I click on the little library down here, uh, most of these are emulations of some of my personal favorite effects. And what you'll notice with the delays are that some of them have the mix at 100%. If the mix is at 100%, that probably means that I like to route it in parallel, but there are several others where the mix is not, like this dual CC right here. <laughs> That gives you a pretty epic dual delay right there. A good example, uh, maybe let's navigate to what would be one of them, maybe this dual delay right here. You can see the mix is at 100%. So simply just drag this one up and then connect it as a parallel chain. And it's already gonna have the level and the mix dialed in. This will give you a lovely rhythmic dual delay. <laughs> Beautiful stuff right there with the dual delay. Let's add some chorus. Match this from the real CE1 that I have here. And you can see how easy it is to just stack these up and get absolute overkill. I'm going to go back to the band command. I'm going to turn the delay off here. Let's just navigate back to that subtle reverb so you can really hear the chorus. This one works great in front of a clean amp as well. Works great with the compressor as well. I'll just move it in front of the amp so you can hear that. That is definitely one of my favorite chorus blocks in there. Alternatively, you can check the multi-tap delay block for some fun four voice choruses like this one right here. Again, you can see the mix is at 100%. So maybe let's do this. Let's drag it down and let's connect it all up in parallel with our delays. And if you are unfamiliar with parallel routing, go and watch my video talking all about it. So this is a four voice chorus now. <laughs> That chorus is absolutely gorgeous. I've navigated to channel B and I've loaded up the big lead block right there. So I'll bypass the compressor and I'll go back to this USA lead mid gain. This is my go-to lead delay setting. You can see there's actually two short delays here with chorus on them and then two longer, more traditional delays for a kind of stereo dual delay. And this sounds absolutely massive. <laughs> Wicked, I love that. And as you can see, heaps of options 
in here if you like the multi-tap delay. You know, personally, I would like more gain. So I'm gonna hit the input boost and the fat switch in this particular amp. Uh, you can of course adjust any of the settings in these and resave these blocks or channels to your liking. <laughs> If you're a fan of older rack units, you can get the Yamaha SPX90 style Symphonic from Flanger Block. We'll leave that one on channel A. Now on channel B, I actually match the flanger from my old TC G4. So I love the way this one sounds. It's a beautiful, subtle flanger right there. Let's look at maybe one more example from the blocks library. We'll get a little bit more esoteric here. I'm going to drop in the mega tap delay uh, right here. And I just have one setting that I absolutely love on this. It kind of reminds me again of old 80s style rack units. This one gives you this really dense but diffused set of 64 delay taps that pan around your head in stereo. I'm actually gonna play you out with this particular example. If you have any questions, please let me know in the comments. And if you have any other requests for future Tuesday Tone Tip videos, also put them in the comments. Don't forget these blocks are linked in the video description. Grab them, have a play with them, make some music with them. Nothing would make me happier than to hear you all playing with these and pulling some epic tones. I hope you all have a great week. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.